Um, Susan, I loved what you wrote about doing your house tour because that was exactly how I felt when I did my house tour, when I walked around my house, you know, the, the, the general spaces are really um, nice and tidy and they look perfectly put together and like someone very organized lives there. And then as I start to go out into the, you know, further deeper into the house and start opening all the doors and the drawers, it, I learned that, okay, <laughs> the person that lives here is not quite as organized as she uh, may appear to be from the outside, um, from, the, from the shared spaces. So I think that that really spoke to me. So I appreciated <laughs> you writing that down so well. It's like a, two different people run this household here, right? You know, the the the, the outside, and then oh, what's on the inside? That's like a <laughs> whole different story. Uh huh. Um. So I'm I'm glad we did that, and I'm glad that um we kind of can see it, and I think that was the whole point of doing that to just have that awareness of okay, this this is real. It's it's a big deal and I get it now, let's let's go tackle it. And I think that's what um, we're gonna try and do today. And then tonight in our homework, we're gonna actually take one of those areas that we've said, okay, this is the area that I know I need to tackle. This is the area that seems easiest to me and I'm gonna start to make progress on it just a little bit at a time. And I think just kind of holding each other accountable and I mean, not so much accountable, but knowing like we're all doing this at the same time, we're all doing this, struggling through it. We all have this issue. And I think that um, that is really gonna help us just to move forward. And then I'm also thinking that um, when we come back together tomorrow to talk through where we might send some of these things that we've collected that we don't need anymore that we're going to feel a sense of like okay i got this yeah this this was difficult i didn't want to do it i was scared and terrified and i resisted and it's a big mess and oh my god i'm like uh, magda said yesterday i would rather set my house on fire than have to go through the declutter process um, I think we're going to have some hope. So going through some of the, doing the first step of it is going to give us like that feeling of we made some progress and we can continue down this path. So, um, and that brings me to that the goal is not to finish. I think you know, I set this challenge up as a declutter challenge, and we would have a week to do this together, and that like is. It's like never going to happen. It's, it's not, it's going to take much longer than a week. So um, we're going to, we're going to start it. The goal is not to finish. The goal is to make progress and to make progress every day or every other day, whatever progress we can make is the progress we're going to make. And we're not going to beat ourselves up over the fact that we are not finished yet. All right. So um, I'm gonna talk through some stuff that um, are just some tips. I'm gonna start in my closet. Did you guys decide where you're gonna start? Yeah, I'm gonna start, um, I call it the buffet. Maybe that's the real name, I don't know. But it's where I keep my mother-in-law's plates and placemats and stuff for the table, things from our wedding that I don't use and I haven't used in 21 years, 20, almost 22 years. So I have to have a real deep light. Am I ever going to use this pretty silver plate that I've never used? So that's what I'm going to start. I think it might be kind of easier. Yeah, that sounds like a really good place to start. I'm starting um, in a little tiny office that space that I use on the end of my kitchen counter that when it's got its shit together, it's pretty fine. And <laughs> 
but most of the time <laughs> it's just like Phew. so that's where I'm starting because it's it's an ugly sore in the middle of the otherwise pretty good common space that also sounds like a really good place to start um one of the things that uh I don't know where I got this from but wherever we do start, when we take everything out, we clean that space wherever we took it out of to get it ready to have stuff put back into it. So that kind of gets me excited that it's going to be like a brand new space, you know, clean it out, make it fresh and ready. Um, and I'm just going to talk through some of the tips that I've been kind of collecting as I get ready to start this process. So um, one of the things, since I'm going to start in my closet, one of the things that I read was to keep a box in my closet, actually keep two boxes in my closet. So one is, here's this box in my closet of stuff that whenever I try it on, it doesn't really speak to me. I don't really like it. I immediately make that decision to get rid of this item. So I have a box in my closet that is always collecting those items. So that should then keep me from getting to the point where I am today of having way too much stuff. So that was one of the things, keep that box and then keep the other box in my closet for things that, you know, I wear once, but then don't need to be washed and have that box so things go in there and can easily be you know they don't they don't end up on the floor of my closet they have a place to live so i'm going to have those two boxes in my closet and hopefully i'll be able to tell the difference between them because that would be trouble although maybe if they all left that would be totally fine as well um Okay, here was another tip that really kind of hit me. Uh, keeping something because you might need it someday is like paying store paying mortgage to a storage company. So that really hit me. Um, I mean, I'm storing all this stuff, and my home is probably the most expensive thing that I own, and I'm keeping all of this stuff in my cabinets and i mean that area could be freed up for something that that really brings me alive like i don't know i mean we talked about storing craft stuff but i mean something that 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 feeds me as opposed to just dead weight in my closet of a bunch of sweaters that i don't actually ever wear so paying mortgage to a storage company. No, I don't want to do that anymore. So that really touched me. And then the other thing that I just keep coming back to is that if I can find somewhere to give this stuff, if I can find um, um, a family or an organization, or I mean, the Goodwill is fantastic and the Salvation Army is fantastic, but if I can find something that connects to a, a cause that I feel really strongly about and I can then connect to that joy that those people will have or, or the, the need that those people have, and if I can give that stuff to that organization, then I can feel so freaking fantastic about about you know those sweaters that are not getting any use in my closet giving those to somebody that that really could use them um one thing that i have recognized i started with my linen closet that was my first thing and i keep all these old pillows why i keep them i don't know but they're now in a bag that was my first first um stuff that I'm going to get rid of was old pillows because I've read they're not hygienic if you can't wash them and I have so many old pillows bed pillows like why it doesn't matter I have them they're going to go 
but you cannot give them to the Salvation Army or the Goodwill because they won't take them because bacteria or hygiene or whatever, they won't resell them. So I had to do some research on where, where would these go? Because I hate the fact that they might just end up in the landfill. And I can give them to, um, there, there are three places I think they said, um, uh, shelter or, or like a wildlife place or like um, a pet, a pet, you know the word that I'm thinking of, a pet, where do you get the pets that are? A dog shelter? Yes, ma'am, a dog shelter. So um, I got all excited about that and I found two places. Um, there's one like a local dog shelter and then there's another a little further from me like a wildlife shelter. And so I can give those old pillows to the wildlife shelter and they're gonna actually know exactly how they wanna use them and they're waiting for that. Like, so that is more of a pull than a, okay, I really just need to get rid of this thing and like, let's get it out of my house. It just makes me feel so much better. And I think if we can find those, if we can find those things and connect them with ourselves, then it's gonna be, the whole thing is gonna be easier. Okay, um, so back to my closet. One of the other things, two of the other things that they said was um, practice one in, one out. So if I buy something new, I have to get rid of something. I think I can do that. And then the, the hanger method. So all of the hangers are facing one direction. And when I take something out to wear it, and when I put it back, I flip the hanger direction so that I always know when I go to look in my closet, if these things, the hanger hasn't shifted, then I'm not wearing it. So hopefully as we go through this, it'll kind of set up these patterns where I'm doing this on a regular basis and I'm going through this stuff on a regular basis. And these habits that I can create for myself will just make it easier moving forward. And here was a really good one in the kitchen. <clears throat> use washi tape. I don't know if you guys use washi tape, but um, my daughter uses washi tape. And you know, what is that? It's like a it's like a pretty tape. It's it's like um, oh, I'm having like a brain fart today, but duct tape, but pretty and small. Yeah, it's okay. thin and it's lightweight. It doesn't stick a whole lot either. So there's no residue. When okay. It comes out. So take washi tape, some kind of pretty washi tape and put it around the, um, the handles of your, of your um, cookware. And then if there's stuff that you aren't using, when, when you take it out to use it, take the washi tape off. And then if there's stuff that still has the washi tape on there in six months, in a year, then you're not using it and you need to get rid of it. So that was just another little, hmm. I don't know, my mind like picks up those little pretty things that are gonna like make me recognize it. So that was just another idea. Um, okay. Okay, when I'm in my closet and I'm going through the items, I need to ask myself if I buy it for myself now. So is this something that speaks to me now? Would I buy it for myself now? And if the answer is no, then it needs to go somebody else to somebody else that would use it now. Um, Could I ask you a question? I, yes. Could I ask you a question, Carrie? Ask so, me. like. Um, is your intention to take everything out of your closet? Like what I've done in the past is I take everything out and then I go like pretend shopping in my yes. stuff and only like keep what I would like to your point of what you just said, what I would buy now, what, what excites me now. Yeah. Um, is that what you're talking about? Are you saying like, just go in your closet and look at each thing and say, does this excite me now? No, I, I'm with you. I want to take 
but I'm going to have to go closet by closet because this sure. I have a gazillion of them. So yeah. I'm going to take one of these closets and dump everything out. Okay. And then I'm going to shop for myself and say, what, do I love this now? And yeah. those are the things that are going to go back into the closet. Okay. So I, I think there's a lot to that whole, take it all out and see it, take it all out and dump it. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm terrified and I, I'm of two thoughts. Like I should take everything out and dump it in my son's room. He's, he's away at college. So I have like a little space I could do that too. And I can close that door. So my husband doesn't go absolutely insane. Um, so I'm of two minds. Either I take everything out, which I think would be really good for me to see it all. But I'm also really, really resistant to that. So I might have to just do one at a time. Mm -hmm. Because if I see it all at once, I just have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, absolutely. Take everything out and as much as you can handle and dump it all out and then shop for yourself, which is another one of the tips that I had. And if I'm shopping for myself and I love that item, then I'm going to wear it. And if I'm shopping and it doesn't speak to me, then somebody else, somebody else can definitely use it. What's your advice for um, my you know, the difference of 10 pounds one way or another, it's like all of a sudden I've got multiple sizes that I'm, I've invested a fair amount of money in. Like I hesitate to, and I don't want to just get rid of stuff that I love that maybe doesn't fit right now. Let's talk about the things that don't fit. Yeah. There what is like the advice. There are two schools of thought on that. One is, you want to keep what works now. So that to me says, get rid of the stuff that doesn't fit. Yeah. But the other school of thought is that, you know, you have, you've invested in this and, you know, we fluctuate. So don't get rid of everything, you know, don't get rid of everything that, that doesn't fit you right now. Like you might at some point, but I get stuck in that. Like personally, I get totally stuck in that. And if you're following the release book and you're following what works for you right now, this moment, then it says, you know, get rid of it, get rid of it. And it also says, stop having that block that, you know, you, you won't, if, if you need it in the future, you're going to figure out how to get it in the future. So it's not, it'll happen like it'll you'll have the money or you'll have the whatever it takes to to get something in the future that you need so i don't know i'm 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 gonna follow the book as as closely as i can but i also know i'm gonna have i'm gonna have some things that are gonna stick around and 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 maybe as i go further down the path they're gonna be they're gonna fall off easier yeah, I would um, keep the ones you absolutely love and maybe have, you know, I wouldn't keep the t-shirts that I can replace or whatever, but I would do the hanger thing upside down or backwards. And if I didn't wear it in a year, that weight's not coming back on and I don't need it anymore. You hope, I mean, we're women and we're getting older, so it might come back on, but then maybe you won't mm. need that shirt anymore. Yeah. You know, so I would have a hard time getting rid of some things. I, got, I just got rid of my work clothes like five years ago and I've been a stay-at-home mom for 18 years <laughs> so it was Good hard for you in style anymore but I had a hard time I might go back to work <laughs> you know yeah. so I would just put them in the corner and flip flip the hanger and revisit it every once in a while that's what I would do I'm not a professional that's a good suggestion um we live a very active outdoor lifestyle so I have a lot of um technical gear technical mm. wear that yeah the other thing that you touched on was the cost of it, you know. That's and that's I, the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I have a hard time with that as well because if there's a piece that I purchased and it was like 
I spent a good bit of money on it. I, I mean, I'm like, I that's money in my closet, but it's not actually money in my closet. That's money that I spent. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And someone else could use it. One of the things that I that I try to do that I have tried to do is to resell my stuff and I use Poshmark. You can do Poshmark, you can do eBay, you can do consignment. And but but the the rub there is that if it's something that if it's something, you know, like let's say I, I have like a J. Crew t-shirt that I that I am gonna resell. I mean, that thing is only gonna go for like, I mean, at the highest, maybe 12 to $15 on Poshmark. Mm -hmm. And then I'm only gonna make like six dollars on it. So if I take the time. I have to take the time to photograph it, list it, and then I have to relist it, you know, keep putting it out there. That's time. So if I'm only going to make $6, I really have to think about how am I, how am I using my time? I mean, could my time be spent more wisely doing something else? And the answer is <laughs> absolutely a hundred percent. Yes. I mean, even if it's, um, something that's that's not making money something that's bringing me joy something that is you know i'm i'm cooking for my family or you know there's so many other things so i i oh it's another one that i'm really going to have a, a hard time a hard time with are you do, you do you have like there are three resale shops where i live that i take stuff and they sell it on consignment and my for me once and they each have three different things. One takes like athletic technical gear, one takes nicer clothing, one takes kind of retro stuff. And for me, once it goes there, it's gone, it never comes home again. So I don't care if it, I, I care that it sells because I, I make a, I could probably make like three grand a year selling clothes just that way. And it's an avenue for offloading. Right. But, um, even that I'm starting to question, like it's not as time intensive as what you described, but mm. it causes me to hang on to things that, oh, maybe, oh, all right, I'm going to sell that, but it's not, it's out of season. So I have to wait till whenever, whenever. And then, then there's a tub of this and a tub of that. And tubs are like <laughs> multiplying like viruses. <laughs> I know. I know I have that as well. Like I have the resale shops, but I, I, I was doing the resale shops and then I was like, Oh, I, if I do it myself, I can keep all that money, you know? Yeah. But I think that's just flawed and I need to get out of that habit. I mean, I honestly think that's just, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's not good for me. I mean, I, I can just hundred percent tell you it's not good for me and I need to stop doing that. Um, and I'm putting this out there on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we all are <laughs> both hands here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here was another really good tip. Um, pretend you're moving. So would it be something that you would box up to move and then be excited to unbox when you got to the new place? So if you can think in that way, that's kind of a biggie because, um, you know, it's an expense to move. It takes time to move. Mm -hmm. and I love I mean we've moved a lot and I love it when 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 we do finally get to the point where we're unpacking the boxes because it's like Christmas and so if I think about the fact that you know why would I move this stuff that doesn't like feel like Christmas to me you know it's like why did I pack that so I like thinking about that too Okay, here's another really good one. Um, 
you won't start liking something that you never really liked. So if you, if you bought it and it's never made it onto your body, you're not all of a sudden going to be like, oh, I, I really like that. So that needs to go. Um, another good tip was um, don't, you know, we all get excited. I don't know if you guys watch the shows. Um, the Home Edit is one of the shows. They like reorganized Reese Witherspoon's closet, which was really awesome to see because I love her and she has, you know, those movies that we all know, Legally Blonde, and she kept all of her wardrobe and um, they reorganized all of that for her. And when they, when they do it, they bring in all these um, really fun, like organizational tools and bins and little baskets and you know they change the rods around and make everything look awesome but one of the things that it says that we shouldn't do so I get excited about making it look pretty when it's done but one of the things that it says we shouldn't do is we shouldn't buy those containers those organizational systems we shouldn't do that until we have everything gone because one of the things that we might be tempted to do is <laughs> start taking all that stuff that that we need to get rid of and make it look pretty in these new little boxes that we bought and that's not that's just <laughs> it's like a hamster wheel right so um don't buy those containers yet all right i covered um Wiping it down. Okay, here's what I'm going to do when I when I go through my my closet. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the questions that we talked about previously from the book, but then I'm also going to ask, does it fit? Have I worn it in the last year? And that that's that might stretch a little bit for me. Is it in good condition and do I feel good wearing it? So those are the questions I'm gonna ask. And then I'm going to have, um, I'm gonna have, I think three piles. One is probably four. One is um, stuff that I'm gonna get rid of, stuff that I'm gonna keep, stuff that I don't know about. So stuff that, um, I need to try on and I'm gonna put it in that pile and I'm gonna then try everything on at once because I don't wanna to have to like stall the process and then stuff that needs to be mended or fixed or something. So that's, how many was that, four? I'm probably gonna have another box that says stuff to resell. And then, the resell stuff, another thing that I get stuck on is that stuff's then around for the longest time, right? Like you were saying, Susan. So if, from what I've read, it says that if that stuff has been around for longer than, and you give yourself a time frame that feels good, then you need to get rid of it. So that's going to be hard too. This is gonna be hard. So I'm glad you guys are doing this with me. <laughs> but tonight the homework is we start on that one area that we said we were gonna start. So mine is linen closet. I already started and I'm going to clean it out and I'm going to make my boxes. And I don't think I'm ready to put anything back yet, but um I'm gonna make 10% progress. And that's the homework for tonight. Ladies, do you have any other questions, concerns, direction? Once I start, I have to stop. I mean, I have to finish it because it's in the middle of my house. So we'll see if I get it done. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow morning before our next Zoom. Yeah, that's a good idea. But also, can I just offer to you that 
from everything I've read, it says, don't, don't worry about finishing it. Just worry about making progress. And maybe it's okay if there's a little bit of a mess in your room for a few days. Maybe Nobody's going to die. I got a party this Sunday. <laughs> well, Sunday's a few days away. Like you have time. It doesn't have to be done by tomorrow. <laughs> so give yourself a little grace to just let that stuff, you know, like, I know I get, from what I've read, it says that we, we get overwhelmed when we feel like we have to finish it. And then we just say, screw it. I'm not, not even going to start. Okay. So I don't think this is you, Lynn, but you know, I, I can't I, it is hard when you, not. it's hard when you um, are partway through and you, to create order first, you have to create chaos, right? You know? Exactly. And I hear what you're saying. And if you have any little people or animals, it can be hard if you've got chaos. So I empathize with that. That's why I chose small because it's not a lot coming out and then I can clean yeah. it and just go to the Goodwill later tomorrow. Perfect. So Perfect. I just have to say, I did this process with my closet about five yeah. years ago. And um, it's sort of like a dressing room, but nothing grand. It's larger than a closet. And um, one side is all shelving with things neatly folded by season and color. Mm -hmm. The other side is all hangers by color. And it's, it was a beautiful thing to behold. <laughs> <laughs> but then I kept buying things. Yeah. And so capacity was exceeded. And the idea, I know what was involved when I did it five years ago. And there's even more stuff in there now. So I may need to like get some serious boost from the work that you're doing, Carrie, to inspire me to yeah. tackle the, the real issue. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm doing this with a group because I knew I knew that I needed support myself. So I'm there for you, Susan, and I know you're <laughs> going to be there for me and we're going to go through this together and we're going to... We can be tapping through. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we've got this. Yeah, something you said sparked something, but now it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. So um, I think we know what our homework is and I think we've got this. And I, I also was thinking maybe we do a, um, tomorrow one of my girlfriends is coming to talk about, you know, where, where you can think about giving these things that you maybe haven't thought of before and the process that she's used. Um, but then beyond tomorrow, I'm thinking maybe we do like a regular weekly Zoom to just kind of hold each other, you know, say I'm there with you. I know you've got this, I've got this too. And we're all in this together and we're going to continue to, to just, you know, get better every day. Right. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. One sock drawer at a time. <laughs> Can I just do my sock drawer? <laughs> it's progress, Lynn. It's progress. No, the stuff in my bedroom's fine. I just got rid of a bunch of it already. So got to work on kitchen and the doors down here. Things behind the doors. Yeah. Great. Right, well, that's all I have for today. Carrie, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing it with me. And, uh, we got this. We have this. All right, ladies. Thank you. Bye. -bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.